instant gratification and how the entire modern world is trying to fight against that and what this means for you. Hey and welcome to this video. It is part of a 25 video series based on a book, 25 Stories I Would Tell My Younger Self. And the second story is the tree story. And as in the first video, the first uh, part that I did here, I want to kind of give you a bit some extra insights behind the stories, mainly from what I've learned since the book came out. The book is now almost 10 years old. It's timeless. And for me, it's always interesting to kind of reflect on this. Uh, life has changed dramatically. I've become a dad and got married. I have a business. It's like a lot of different things in comparison back then. And so, <clears throat> but that second story is really around growing that tree as a little kid from a little seedling and having that patience and not getting distracted, not hearing the noise, uh, believing in oneself. And at the end, it all comes down to instant gratification. It's somewhat a an experiment on the marshmallow experiment. I don't know if you know about the marshmallow experiment. And this, I want to be very clear. There's a lot of uh, additional data coming out of the marshmallow experiment that kind of puts it a bit into doubt how much selection bias was in that experiment. But the base story of the egg, uh, marshmallow experiment is you put a kid in a room, you give them a marshmallow. If they can handle waiting while the experiment goes out and they can wait, they get a second marshmallow. So they get twice the amount when the experimenter comes back. And so it's all about being able to delay one's gratification. Now, the issue with that is a bit that it seems that later on, and that's where the a dramatic kind of results came in, that later on, these kids that were good at uh, delaying one's gratification, they became very successful in life. And it just shows maybe a little bit there that there was some selection bias in a sense where already like kids coming out of a good household, good background, they were the ones who obviously seemed to already be doing better as a kid. So it seemed that these families, their education, managed to kind of educate the kids in a way that had these prolonged fruits later on. And so that's just important to kind of note there. Um, and looking at all that, right? And so I want to give you maybe some, some insights of the tree story. And again, I don't want to re rehearse the entire story because I always think you should actually read it yourself. And I know that many, many people tell me that the tree story is actually one of their most favorite stories. I don't know if it is for you. You can let me know in the comments below. But I always find it very interesting to kind of get that feedback. Now, obviously, looking back today, right? I want to probably address three things. First one, raising kids. I find the instant gratification trap so easy today for kids. And I noticed this in a couple of ways. So when I was a kid and we were driving, I was lucky if I actually had my own headphones. Most of the time we were just listening to the radio. And so we had to listen to whatever was on the radio. And sometimes if my parents were nice, we would put on children's songs, but they were on a cassette, didn't even... It was not even CDs. It was a cassette that you put into the car and then you'd listen to that. And there was no, like, I want this song, I want that song, or let's play that song, or I want to listen to that song again. That just didn't exist. You just listened to whatever came on. And uh, if you got lucky, then you had your one favorite song and the radio station, or, you know, it took like an hour until the tape was through and then you could listen to that song again. So, obviously, I think this is so powerful. Now, with food, right? I mean, I don't know, delivery services. I don't know how often I catch ourselves at the family and I'm like, hey, uh, what do you want to eat? And they're like, oh, I want this, I want that. And like, we order this, like the instant gratification is not like, no, you get what's ever being served on the table. And I don't know, as a kid, this was the case. You either ate what was served or you just go to bed hungry. And I don't know, I, I, I feel these things so many times, this instant gratification. So I'm and I mean, the same with movies, right? I mean, uh, our kids are actually not allowed to watch much. So it's just like, for example, on the plane, right? Good example. Let's say we travel, then that's when our kids always uh, get to watch something because, yeah, I mean, you want to go with the least amount of resistance there. And obviously one of the key things there is, what's going on? Uh, yeah, so uh, you just watch, Yeah, you just make them, like you help them watch something so that, you know, it's quiet and they don't kind of, uh, annoy everyone else in the plane. But so there's the same thing. Like instead of, like I remember when I was flying for the first time, I was 16 years old when I flew, 15 years old to the US when I was the first time flying. And I mean, there was no on-demand movies. You, you basically had to watch whatever was on. And so, I mean, this is a night and day difference to everything. And why am I mentioning this? I'm mentioning this because actually on purpose, I'm trying to give my kids 
less instant gratification on these things, less on demand, and way more, you just have to wait. You have to take whatever comes at you right now. I think that's a really key kind of part. And I don't know, I, I hope that that way I kind of train my kids to have more ability to lay their gratification. I can't wait to do the marshmallow experiment on them. Let's see how that goes. I mean, my oldest one is three, so I don't know. Not the, I, It's still a bit too early. The kids in the experiment were about four or five years old, which makes a bit more sense because he doesn't fully, he wouldn't fully get it yet. Um, yeah, the second one that I really want to share is actually daily life as a grown-up, right? I think what happens to kids as a, in a small kind of sense, as a grown-up, it gets even worse, right? And it's the dopamine trap. Um, I, it was actually a book I had intended on writing um, before I started my current company, Cake. And it just got so busy that then I didn't have time for that and I kind of scratched it because then there became, there were so many books that came out at that time, Dopamine Nation and so on. So it was very interesting to see that it was actually the exact right hunch. And dopamine is just that hormone that really makes it sometimes difficult for us to delay gratification because it's that motivation hormone. And so, I mean, social media, all on demand, all these things, right, are so tricky for us as grown-ups. And if you're asking me, like, especially on weekends or something, I really try to go on a dopamine diet, if you want to call it, right, where I really try to kind of decrease the stimulus, put the tablets away, put the screens away, anything that kind of gives me this instant gratification, try to put that away, because I feel this is so crucial. When I Sometimes, you know, when I sit there and I'm like, oh, I need to check my phone, but then I kind of hesitate quick briefly and I'm like, okay, what do I need to check my phone for? Is it for something meaningful? Is it just because my mind kind of is kind of racing and I don't know, it just kind of feels nervous or something, right? So, I mean, this is this gives me so much kind of like, it reminds me so much of that tree story when you wanted to dig down to the tree and kind of see is the tree growing and thereby destroying everything. It's kind of a similar uh, situation. and. I mean, last but not least, is it's investing. I think it's so hard in investing to have this delayed gratification. I mean, crypto is so full of these people, and, and, and that's honestly, sometimes that's exactly what actually makes me wanna get out of crypto, is people who wanna get rich overnight, who are super toxic, they, they hate on everyone that, I don't know, does it different than them because they're scared that their path doesn't really work. And I mean, that's the entire story of the tree story. Uh, how kids and, and other classmates kind of start trying to just detract you and stuff. And I don't know, I think this is like so difficult in investing. And I mean, that was one of the most powerful things that Warren Buffett said uh, when he said, uh, you know, like in investing, like do a lot of research, then like close yourself in, shut yourself out, make sure you don't get distracted, close the curtains, close the doors and just make a decision. And don't kind of get distracted with the noise. Um, that's just noise, right? Understand the, under, the underlying kind of fundamentals. And I think this is so powerful, this is so interesting how difficult this is, right? Obviously, especially in a market that's so irrational as crypto and so emotional as crypto. So yeah, I find this so interesting as a, as a, as a whole. And these are kind of the takeaways I have in all that. Um, looking back, obviously, from that. So yeah. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it was your favorite story, what other story was your most favorite story. Obviously, we're going to continue this series with uh, the next story, story number three. And if you like this stuff, then leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, obviously, so you don't miss any of the further videos. And uh, yeah, with that, thanks so much. All the best. Julian, bye-bye.